Hey, good morning YouTube. Uh, thought I'd uh, put out another video, kind of more like a blog today, uh, but it will incorporate the uh, GMC Denali um, Canyon. So what we're going to do is I'm going for a bike ride here in uh, North Carolina. Kind of one of my other passions is mountain bike riding. So what we're going to be doing is loading the bike on the D Denali, the Canyon. I'll show you my process. A lot of you have asked about the Denali and uh, kind of where I've stored some of the tow hitch and where I've stowed my uh, jack since I installed the kicker amplifier inside the uh, cab. So I'll show you where I relocated the uh, jack and go through some of that on this video. But uh, without further ado, this is my bike. And it is an Ibis. Uh, it's a little bit of an older Ibis, but uh, I still love this bike, a Mojo HD, one of my favorite mountain bikes. Over there is my wood shop, and we'll talk more about that later. But uh, we're gonna be loading this bike on right now. We're gonna be going mountain biking. All right, here we are at the Denali uh, Canyon. And kind of look at my setup here. I've got a Rocky Mountains bike rack that I've uh, converted basically to be a solo rack here. And what I do is I can drop this solo rack pretty easily. And then I can drop my tailgate. You gotta be a little bit careful because it does rest on the plastic here, as you can see. But a lot of you have asked, hey, where are you stowing your jack because uh, you put the amplifier in the car? So to answer that question, here's what I'm doing with my, uh, my jack. It's in the swing out case here. So if you look in there, that's where the jack is stored. It's kind of hard to see now. But there's where my jack is. And I still got plenty of room in this uh, swing out case. But that is where I stow the jack. So it's always available. And that just locks back in place. So here's another use for these swing out cases that I talked about. I use these things all the time. So again, I'm going mountain biking this morning. If I want to use these here, I can do that and they don't even interfere with my backflip cover. I can still fully open the, the cases, which is nice. And again, I'm doing this with one hand. So bear with me. But what I'm going to do is store my mountain bike stuff in my swing out case. And as you can see, I can get my shoes, my glasses, my gloves, and my helmet in the case. Let's lock that up. Kind of nice. So again, I'm a big fan of these swing out cases. Uh, they keep everything clutter free, help me organize everything when I want to go mountain biking or do anything else. Bike goes front wheel first, strap it in here, put the front wheel in the groove, pull the tire holder up, that comes down, clicks, and just put the strap around the rear wheel, we're all locked in, that's it. That's my bike loaded on the back of the Denali, pretty easy. I like to ride at least three times a week, so having an easy process is critical so I can get out there without uh, too much trouble. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I got the bike loaded up. Uh, the GMC Canyon's ready to go. Uh, we're gonna take off to uh, Lake Norman State Park, which is about a 10 minute ride from my house here. Kind of where I do most of my uh, mountain biking. Most of you familiar with the uh, canyon, but again, we've talked about the modifications. You guys can look at some of my other videos for the modifications. And we get inside here. Uh, 
All right, getting ready to pull back. Uh, just wanted to show you what my screen looks like with that bike there. So when you have the bike there, what's gonna happen is I get the alert uh, from the rear view camera that there's something impeding my, uh, my reverse. So basically you're gonna see that on the screen and then my seat's also also making the vibrating sound that the uh, denial or the vibrating uh, uh, movement that it does when it alerts you to something uh, behind you. So anyway, kind of interesting when you got the bike on the rack back here, but uh, we're heading to State Park now. So I'm uh, gonna be pulling out of the garage. So again, I kind of wanted to do this video as a little bit of a blog, just to introduce you guys to me. I know I've done the Denali videos uh, with the Canyon and I've done a few other videos, but um, kind of just want to introduce you to me and a little bit more about my situation here in North Carolina. So. About four and a half years ago, um, I was still working in the state of California and I decided, you know what, uh, for me to retire one day and live comfortably, um, I needed to move out of state simply just because I couldn't afford it anymore to live in California and be retired. So that's kind of the decision we made. So we ended up building this house here uh, in Mooresville, North Carolina. And we've, we've showed you the house before, that's my house. So uh, we built the house. Um, my wife moved about two years ago and I proceeded to commute from work to here for about two years until I was uh, able to retire. So um, that's kind of my situation here in North Carolina. Interestingly enough, about uh, three years after we built this house, three years after we built this house, my brother ended up buying the property right across the street so he's on the water side lake norman is right there you can still see some of the water but yeah that's my brother's house so you can see the lake down there and i can't lie what's kind of nice about that situation is um i kind of have a house with a uh, sort of lakefront property but i don't have to pay the steep price of living on the water so kind of a nice deal for me um and my brother's family's across the street um, so that's nice too. Obviously, uh, it's easy to just walk across the street, uh, borrow tools, he can borrow tools. Um, I can put my boat in down there. So that's been kind of nice, but that's literally my situation right now here in North Carolina. So that's kind of what I'm dealing with. All right, we're headed off to uh, Lake Norman State Park. I think I mentioned that before. And obviously I need to put my seatbelt on here. So let's talk a little bit while I'm driving here about uh, the GMC Canyon uh, Denali. So far, I've had zero problems with this truck. The truck has been nothing but phenomenal. Um, it is the one of the quietest cars, believe it or not, that I've owned. So the inside cabin noise is, to me, is almost non-existent uh, when you're inside the cab. So that's been a big plus because I like a quiet car. Um, the technology in the car to me is a step up from anything that I've had prior and the car that I sold actually was a Camaro Z01 1LE uh, before I bought the Denali and that was just so impractical that uh, I finally had to get rid of the car and the market was booming for those cars so I ended up selling that and uh, that's how I how I got into the uh, GMC Canyon so it's been it's been nice because now my wife can use her car. I was constantly using her car to go mountain biking or do anything and she has a Ford Explorer. So now we've got a truck and we've got the Ford Explorer. I don't have to borrow her car anymore, especially to go mountain biking and whatnot. So that's been kind of nice. So that's kind of uh, a little bit of the backstory too about how I got to California, how I got to North Carolina from California. Um, I was in law enforcement uh, in California and like I indicated a few minutes ago, um, it was tough trying to get my family out here and my kids out here and make that transition. Uh, but it was well worth it because my kids were still relatively young at the time. One was in high school and one was just starting their freshman year in college. So we were able to move the family out here. Uh, my daughter was not impacted by the high school move because we were during COVID and they didn't even have a senior year. So really it worked out for me um, moving out here to North Carolina. And you know, the main reason that I'm here, I'm not a California hater. You'll, you'll hear a lot of people, oh, I hate California. California is a beautiful state. Uh, there's a lot to do in that state. I enjoyed working there. 
Um, the simple fact is I no longer could afford to live there as, a, as kind of a, a middle class, maybe even a little bit of an upper middle class American. I couldn't afford to live in the state of California uh, without, without continuing to work probably into my late 60s. So again, and that was because of everything, housing, um, all of the taxes that uh, California levies on you. It was just impossible for me to, to stay in that state and do everything I wanted to do. Um, so that's how I ended up in North Carolina. And I've had family in North Carolina, so I knew kind of that I wanted to be here eventually. And I actually uh, lived here when I, was, when I was very young because my dad was in the service. So anyway, that's kind of the backstory. Um, we're traveling a state park right now. You can kind of see where, where I live, you know. Um, the nice thing is it, it, it's kind of in the country, but seven minutes away, we've got a Costco. Um, we've got all the amenities that you would find in any, any medium-sized city in America. So anyway, um, that's again, some more of the backstory of why I'm here. And just to reiterate, not a hater of California. You know, you're gonna hear all these people, oh, California, I can't stand it, the politics. You know what? Every state has some advantages and disadvantages. North Carolina does too. But the big advantage for me was cost of living, uh, the ability to buy a home at a decent price. And the last thing I'll say is my kids have a future here. My kids had no future in California. They would never own a home. Um, or at least it would have took them 20 years to save up enough for a down payment on a home in California. My son is now purchasing his first home. He's only 24 years old. Um, he got a 1,600 square foot town home for $270,000. And you know, that's impossible to do in California. So we believe we made the right choice for us. Um, and you know, everybody's gotta make their own choices in life and, and do what, uh, what they need to do. But uh, that's again why we're here and why we're extremely happy in North Carolina. Okay, uh, we're getting close to State Park here where I'm gonna go ride, but uh, a lot of people ask to listen to the stereo. I don't know how well you're gonna hear this in here, but I'm gonna turn up the stereo for you. give you guys a little bit of a uh, feeling of uh, what that uh, what that uh, sub sub uh, does for the back and how much bass that it introduces into the cab this is a pretty small cab so it just it does a really good job and that placement under the rear seat seems to be perfect as far as the acoustics in the car so I've been very happy with it and again I've got a video on that if you want to see the video of the installation on the sub but I uh, wanted to a couple people have been asking in the uh, questions about how it sounds. I know it's hard to hear uh, off a of camera, but anyway, try to give you guys a little bit of an idea. Um, again, we're kind of working our way down to uh, State Park here, about a 10 minute drive from my house. <clears throat> Back to some of the modifications and how those are hold, holding up. Um, I really haven't done any hardcore uh, four wheeling and probably won't unless I have to because of a bad winter or something around here. But uh, so far, all the modifications are holding up. Um, I love those, uh, those rear swing out cases. Um, I love my tonneau cover, my flip, flip back tonneau cover. Um, kind of love everything I've done so far, so no regrets on uh, my modifications. And again, you guys can see all that on, on the other video if you're just catching this video, uh, the modifications video to the uh, GMC Canyon Denali. But you can see the sign there. We're kind of heading down towards Lake Norman State Park right now. All right, we're coming right up to the entrance here. Uh, you can see the sign, Lake Norman State Park. The nice thing about the state parks here in North Carolina is I don't have to pay any fees to use this. There's no parking fees or additional cost. Uh, going back to kind of my old life in California, every time I went mountain biking or I went somewhere, I had to pay a parking fee at a state park or I had to buy a state park pass. Um, it was one of those things that you don't think about, but it's just kind of another tax on top of a tax. Uh, here in North Carolina, you know, you pay your taxes and this stuff is free to the uh, to the public, basically. So the parking lots are free, 
the state park's free, the trails are free, which, um, again, I appreciate. And, again, reiterate, not a hater in California. It, it is what it is. But um, I love the fact that you can go here and you can use the facilities or use uh, the amenities here in the state, and they're not gouging you for more cost. So, again, we're pulling into the parking lot where I do uh, do most of my riding. And um, this is kind of an area that's, that's not... It's more uh, like a single track, Rudy type uh, ride versus where I used to ride in California was more desert, uh, more semi-arid desert, you know, that was more wide open. Um, this is a little bit different for me. I'm starting to get used to it. And we're pulling into the uh, State Park parking lot right now. And the State Park is located on the uh, on Lake Norman. Well, I can unload the bike here with one hand, but uh, kind of show you how easy this rack is on the back of the Denali. Basically, I'm gonna kind of unclip the back tire here. Just pull that pull that strap out in the front. Push this down. And then I can actually just lift the bike off with one hand. And that's me holding the camera too. So a really functional, easy use. And then this, fold that down. Obviously gotta move the bike out of the way here. And remember, we put that, uh, my bicycle gear in that swing case. Oh, yeah, just pull out that swing case. I'm gonna give you a little tour here of the state park area, getting ready for my ride. Taking a look at the state park here. Got to see the water through there. And again, these aren't the riding trails, so I'm just giving you guys a little view of the, the park here, what it looks like. Some of the water. And then that kind of starts off all the hiking trails over there. And they got a bunch of riding trails. Here's kind of the main entrance to Lake Norman State Park. You can go inside the building. They've got a bunch of educational, um, kind of like a miniature museum where you can study the wildlife here and the history of Lake Norman State Park. Kind of cool. Bring the kids here. And as always, the Canyon Denali just looks great. Yeah, this, looks great. this is more for you mountain bike people. I'm just giving you a walk of the uh, trail that I just got done riding. I'm not gonna walk the whole thing. Just guys, giving you, you mountain bike people a little bit of an idea. Kind of what the trails look like here. Obviously, you can see a lot of roots, a lot of trees. So coming from where I used to ride most of my life, this was a big change on sometimes very narrow single track heavily rooted uh, the terrain is kind of flowing we do have some hills here we're kind of at the base of the Smoky Mountains here in Mooresville so we do get some hills it's not completely flat but anyway this gives you guys an idea of kind of what the riding looks like back here but it's interesting uh, you got to stay on your toes that's for sure these roots pedal strikes all kinds of stuff I didn't worry about riding in California I have to worry about here but it gives you a pretty good idea of what the terrain looks like. All right, guys, we're heading back. I'm getting the truck here. You guys that view those rocker panels, the uh, rock arts. I think they look absolutely phenomenal on this truck. But uh, you be a judge for yourself. 
bike's all loaded up. All right, guys, finished with my ride. We're back here at the truck. Already loaded up the bike. It's only about a two minute process. And back in route to the house. A little more of the state park here as we drive out. And I'll, uh, it's about a, again, about a 10 minute drive from my house here. Talk a little bit about the town, Mooresville. So Mooresville, when we first uh, bought here four and a half years ago, was somewhat unknown. It was still fairly small, fairly quaint. Uh, we're about 45 minutes from Charlotte, uh, from CLT or Charlotte Douglas International Airport. So we chose this area because we were still relatively close to an airport. Uh, we've got the University of Davidson uh, about 15 minutes, 20 minutes away. And obviously Charlotte's only about 45 minutes away. So we kind of enjoy the enjoy the small small town atmosphere combined with the amenities that we needed uh, closer to a big city and it was still uh, relatively inexpensive when we moved here so that's all changed in four years COVID hit right after we built our house and COVID has kind of changed changed the dynamic here um, we've had a it's one of the fastest growing cities uh, I think not only in the United States but uh, here in North Carolina now it's still pretty rural once you get outside of Mooresville and you start heading towards the mountains, but um, we did not expect that. We moved here thinking that it was going to be this sort of quaint, uh, quaint southern southern place in Mooresville, but it's uh, all of a sudden exploded uh, with uh, building high density homes. Or in closer as the closer you get to Charlotte, the more high density housing you have, and then the further you move from uh, kind of Charlotte. Uh, uh, west towards the mountains uh, obviously it becomes more rural that's kind of what you're looking at now as we drive down the road but uh, you know within 10 15 20 minutes that all changes it becomes a lot more dense as you get towards Charlotte but there's more and more building out this direction so uh, not quite what we expected when we moved here we still love it but uh, we have experienced a little bit of a population boom uh, a lot of people from uh, the east, uh, further east, are coming down as far as uh, the northeast, um, New York, uh, Boston, those types of areas. We see a lot of people moving in from there. And we do see some people coming from California, not quite as many as from the northeast, but uh, we do, do see people coming from the west. But it uh, gives you a little bit more of an idea of where we live here in North Carolina. Um, and if you guys haven't, please uh, check that subscribe button uh, I've got over 100 subscribers now I know that doesn't seem like many but uh, as we head towards more I'll be uh, putting out some uh, some even more interesting videos uh, we've got a small airplane here it's actually my brother's but uh, we fly that quite a bit over the area in the Smoky Mountains and I'm looking to make some interesting videos uh, in the airplane and some more Denali videos so go ahead and hit that subscribe button guys All right, well, lastly, I just wanted to say that this uh, this video was kind of a blog. I wanted to introduce uh, you guys from uh, YouTube to kind of my life here and give you a little bit of a idea of why I'm here, the area that I'm in, and uh, kind of the channel. And I'll, I'll reiterate with the channel. Um, if you've seen, I've already done a video on the uh, GMC Denali Canyon, an install video on the kicker uh, subwoofer uh, slash amplifier. Um, there's a bunch of gun release videos or unboxing of guns on there and those are a few of my hobbies I'll continue to make those videos uh, continue to make more Denali videos uh, I'll probably do one on uh, some of the other modifications here coming up So stay tuned for those uh, a couple airplane videos that I think you guys will find interesting but um, again, this was kind of just introduce you to me and the area and uh, Hopefully expand my audience a little so I can keep making these uh, videos for you guys um, but we're driving back down towards my house um, here in Mooresville. And I'm in the county, not the city of Mooresville. So um, hope everybody's doing well out there. And uh, we'll see you see you on the next video. But uh, again, this was more of a blog. So uh, tune in, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye. As we're uh, kind of looking at my house here to the right, right there. And then you're looking at my brother's house down here. And again, we talked about my brother and I living across the street from one another. You know, a lot of people are like, well, you know, 
it must be expensive to live here in Mooresville. So just because you guys are tuning in, I'm going to tell you, when we first built this, my house was the low 500s. We're on an acre. We've got about 3,400 square feet, and we're on an acre of our uh, property here. And it was the low fives when we built. Of course, that's gone up since COVID and the, the housing explosion, but it's still relatively inexpensive housing here. My son just purchased a 1,600 square foot uh, townhome for uh, $270,000. So it can be done here still in Mooresville. Um, that was one of the big reasons we talked about my decision to move from California. Uh, only because I thought my kids had a better future, you know, that American dream of owning a home and living, you know, something like this in California is probably going to be two, three million dollars. Uh, my brother's house down here, that's way out of reach. That'd be a five, six million dollar house on any kind of body of water with four or five thousand square feet on an acre in California. So kind of gives you a little bit of a uh, idea of what uh, housing looks like and I'm, I'm just being completely honest on these videos because um, again I'm trying to get you guys to understand uh, the decisions I made why I made and just kind of give you guys some reference point for people that haven't been to this area or haven't been to the south um, this is kind of why we moved here